Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, please consider sticking around, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I am on the road to 100 subscribers, so if you could help me out, that would be phenomenal. It really does help these tiny little YouTube channels like me getting more subscribers, and 100 is a good goal to start with. For everyone returning, thank you so much for all of your love and support, your comments, and just being so uplifting and being part of this family. I highly appreciate it. Because of you guys today, the topic is going to be something that you have requested. This is actually going to be a series, and I have had several of you ask me about tarot cards, oracle cards, and other tools such as uh, pendulums and even Ouija boards. We're going to start with the basics of Terra. So a lot of you want to know more about Terra and how to read, but today I'm going to show you and talk to you about the very basics of Terra because I think sometimes people jump into this without knowing any history and that might be sad. It might be a mistake, too. I also want to talk about some of the rumors that surrounds tarot cards to maybe help put your mind at ease or maybe help you find something that you didn't know about. So I am planning on doing a longer companions piece to these videos that will be linked to each video from my blog. So those will be a longer in-depth with more examples of different types of spreads and things like that. So look for those coming soon. I don't know if they'll be here this Friday, but soon. Um, so Tara. Tara is an art. It has been around for extremely long time. In fact, people have been able to find Tara as far back as Egyptian use, maybe even before that. So that is really wild and really exciting. Now, part of my bucket list is to go see museums around the world. And while I've been to the Louvre, this particular uh, exhibit was not there. It's in another, uh, I don't remember exactly the museum, but it's in Paris. There's one museum in Paris and one P a museum in Morocco that have spreads of tarot cards funny that date back to 1319 and 1312 that's really impressive and I really want to see them so yeah that is definitely a bucket list so obviously Tara has been around for a very long time people use this as tools for many different things but they also use it for just art Every part of the world has a version of Terra. Now, it is different than it was, but a lot of the basic same principles are still there and still used today. So that's quite interesting to me that something that started, you know, before any of our times is still around and very prominent. Part of my reason for taking this a little bit slow is I want to address some of the stereotypes when it comes to tarot card reading. Now, a lot of people have an image of a stereotypical gypsy somewhere in a wagon or in a tent and reading to you about your love life. You're going to meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger, that kind of thing. There's a lot of Hollywood movieized complete fabrication of how it actually is. There are some people who do that, but the majority of tarot card readers are people that you would meet every single day and never know it. And this includes people who are incredibly religious, like my grandma, or people who are teachers, people who are doctors, people who are lawyers. President Ronald Reagan used Terra and astrology for his entire presidency. So even if you, whatever you feel about him, I don't care, but I just thought it was interesting, an interesting fact that that was something that he actively used. 
Tarot can be used for more than one thing. It's not just about reading the future. It can be used as a form of meditation. It can be used as a support system. It can be used to get you out of a bad mood. You know, there are, are many things that you can use Tara for. And yes, you can use Tara for reading other people. And that's what people traditionally see. There is a very weird rumor that I don't know why, but people believe that you should not read tarot cards for yourself. The only why I can get out of this is because you're going to be biased. No matter how hard you try, when you do a reading for yourself, you're going to be biased. And you may want to see a certain situation one way so much that you're not able to separate that from what the cards are telling you. Now, that's just human. Uh, I, I don't know anybody who wouldn't do that. That's just kind of a natural thing to do. So I don't, I don't see that as anything except human. It's not bad. It's not negative. It's not hard. It, it's not something that you shouldn't do. You can read tarot for yourself. Quite frankly, I do it every day for myself. And it's just like getting my morning cup of coffee. I get my morning cup of coffee. I do a quick reading for myself. I use this for meditation purposes. And I also use Tara as part of my work because I do do. I do do. I do do. I do do readings for people. And um, I've been doing more and more recently. And it's something that I take very seriously. So anybody can use Tara. I don't want the association of evil and the devil and things like that because I, I don't know. I know there's, I believe, okay, I don't know. I believe that there are some passages in certain Bibles that say there's things against Tara. I don't know if they're actually speaking of Tara specifically, but witchcraft and things like that. Now, I identify as a pagan witch. So I don't believe in the evil as traditional Christians would. Yes, I believe in evil, but I don't think that anything like this is evil. I think it's like anything else in this world where how you use it is the most important thing. You can use anything for good. You can use anything for evil. Anything. So using a deck of cards, it, it's not Satanistic or religious. It is what it is. And I think it bothers people because there is a devil in the cards, but that's relatively new. That has only been around for the last few hundred years. So again, the history of Terra is long and interesting. And I don't know if I will ever be able to touch on that in any of these videos. But like I said, I'm going to try to do a companion for my blog and we can see more of this. So after we've talked a little bit about the history of Tara and a little bit of the confusion and stereotypes around Tara, the first thing is decks. What is a Tara deck? It's very, very simple. So a Tara deck is traditionally 78 cards. That includes 22 major arcana cards and 58 minor arcana cards. Those minor cards are divided into four different suits, and I will show you those in a moment. But those are going to be wands, cups, swords, and pentacles slash coins. Most decks today, most, depending on where you live in the world, are based off of the Rider weight Terra which is, this is the box, which is this box here. 
This is the first deck that I got. It was given to me, which I'll talk about in just a moment too. Um, you can, uh, I will leave a link where you can purchase this in, from Amazon in the description box. But this is known as the Rider Weight Terra deck, the Rider deck, the Weight Terra deck, the Smith deck. It is known by several different names. But this is the basis of most Terra cards today. So every tarot card deck is going to be based off of this unless it is specified otherwise. So as far as getting your first tarot deck, I know that there are a lot of people saying that you must have someone gift your tarot cards to you. It's not true. If you want to learn how to do tarot, get yourself some tarot cards. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being gifted a tarot deck. It's actually really, really nice. And hey, thanks to anybody who does it. I've been gifted like three or four, I was gonna say two, but I now that I'm thinking about three or four in my life, and it is very lovely, very kind. Actually, my first deck was the Rider Waite. Now it wasn't this one in particular, but I was given this one. Um, unfortunately I, uh, lost it in a foot, so I don't have those any longer. So I bought myself some new ones. Um, so just giving you some examples of the setup of this deck. Like I said, it's 78 cards, 22 major, seven or 22 major, 58 minor. And, um, this is the magician. This is traditionally the first card in every deck that is based off of these tarot cards, which is the majority of what you're going to find unless it's specified differently. This is the number one card. This is a major arcana card. So that's an example of one. Another example of a major arcana, justice. Judgment, and the star. When you get these particular cards in a reading, traditionally it is a much stronger slash more serious reading, meaning that you really have something, someone, that you need to pay attention to, a situation that you need to really think about, it you will understand in the context of the reading. But usually when you get one or several of those cards in your readings, you really need to pay attention. Just because you don't get those in a reading doesn't mean that it's any less of a reading. Just you really, really need to pay attention because these cards are very specific and aren't up for much interpretation depending on the reader. So some examples of the minor arcana cards is we have the cups, which represent um, emotional nature, um, interpersonal relationships when you're doing readings. And this also represents the element of water. Pentacles are also known, known as coins. This is usually consistency, education, security, or wealth. And this represents the element earth. The Knight of Swords. Swords are um, like your heart, your intellect, need for information or affirmation, and it represents the element air. And wands. Wands can also be known as staves. So this is a spiritual level, high being, core of your being, spring, and this represents the element fire. As you can see, there are very specific meanings to every card in this deck. 
It also comes with the handy dandy book that gives you a little bit of the history of Terra as well as definitions to the cards. Now, definitions of cards are up to the interpretation of the person reading, but this is very handy to have when you are learning. When you first get a tarot deck card, I highly recommend that when you get it, you open up the box and look at every single card, every card. Keep a journal next to you and without bias, write down the first thing that pops into your mind about these cards. What do they make you feel? Why do they feel this way? What does this remind you of? Does this remind you of a certain person? Before you even read the descriptions or meanings of what is assigned to these cards, put your own meanings on it first. Now, picking a tarot card deck can be difficult. I recommend getting the right or weight first. No matter what, there are so many beautiful, beautiful, amazing tarot decks out there. This is one of the easiest decks to read on and to learn from. So, um, like I said, there'll be a description, there'll be a link in the description to purchase these for yourself because I highly, highly recommend that you start with something simple and build yourself up. So to give you an example of another deck, this is the Little Golden Terra which I will also leave a link if you'd like. This is also a really good one to start learning on. And just to show you, it also has a Magician card. It's different than the other one, but this is what the Magician card looks like. And of course, this is a different deck. They're going to look different, but everything is the same. So you will have a star, you will have judgment, you will have all four of the suits in there. This is a very nice one to read on as well. But like I said, you, I would say start with a writer and then try going up to this one because this one is a little bit more complicated, which is the little, uh, little golden Terra or the golden Terra. It reminds me of little golden books. I want you to really wait to get tarot decks like this. Now, again, this is in Magician, Magician the number one card. Um, this is a specialized deck. This is Welcome to Night Vale, which is a podcast, but this is based off of the podcast. Many people see this as a dark deck. I'm a light worker, so this is something that I use. I do not recommend using any type of deck outside of the Rider weight until you are comfortable because sometimes they're just trying to sell you pretty pictures, but other times you're going to realize the way you read is going to change and you're going to branch out on different things and it might be darker per se but it doesn't mean that it's evil that's a ways coming so definitely start off small definitely learn what the cards mean be familiar with what they mean but you're going to add your own spin to every single card. Every card is going to represent something to you. 
And that's the interesting thing about it, even though they're going to say, you know, the Queen of Pentacles means that you're in charge of your money. You might look at the Queen of Pentacles and say, this looks exactly like my grandma and she is sitting in a field and I, I don't know, man, she looks like she's down and I, I, I don't know why. Uh, maybe there's a young man in her life and you know they're these are stories these are stories and it is up to you to interpret interpret how these stories are going to go you read them reading cards and interpreting cards is your first step before you start doing spreads or anything for anybody else you need to get familiar with the cards. You need to understand your personal reaction to them. And then you really need to look at them, really look at them and see what is in these cards. While you might see a man on a horse with a sword, I also see wind. I see birds in the air. I see almost like it's fire and trees in the back background why is that all there and you might see the king of cups just sitting on his throne but there's water all around him and why is he out in the middle of nowhere in water why does he have a white cape draped around him why is he wearing blue really dive into these cards before you ever start reading for somebody else. Definitely do readings for yourself. I would start with the very, very, very basic spread of three cards. Past, present, future. And practice that over and over and over again. You pull out three cards. The first one is the past. The second one is the future, I'm sorry, past. The second one is the present. The third one is the future. Interpret those cards. Use a journal or just use your mind. Use your mind palace. Reading tarot is an art. It is not a science. It's not exact. You're going to be wrong. You're gonna get things wrong and that is okay. But before you start doing readings for anybody, you need to be comfortable and confident in the cards. And that's why I recommend getting something like the Rider Waite or the Little Golden Terra before going to something like Night Vale. Because these are going to be more complicated cards, even though they are essentially the same. The readings are going to take on many different types of of meanings. This is a tower card. It's definitely not looking like a traditional tower card. You know, I, the five of swords. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful deck and I love it. But, um, there, for example, there's a David Bowie Tara out there and I am not getting it yet until I am more confident in other decks and that that's just something I really believe in is you need to be confident a in the most basic things before you move on to decks because they're pretty there's a lot of pretty ones out there unless you're just using them for art but there's a lot of pretty decks out there so I'm gonna leave you with this today I want you to take a look at some tarot decks use my link if you like and understand that you can have a tarot deck it doesn't have to be gifted to you this is not an evil thing this is not a bad thing this is something that can be a hobby this is something that can lead you into something bigger who knows but tarot cards are an art form and every single card, while they have a basic meaning, may not be the same meaning 
for you when you were doing a spread. So practice, 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 practice. Okay? We're going to come back next time and I'm going to talk a little bit more and maybe do a couple of general readings so you can see the process of that. Before I go, I just want to give a quick shout out to Melissa Blue Delish for the beautiful jewelry that I have on today. And um, she's my friend. I support her. So I will put her link in the description as well. You'll be seeing my blog links. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Until then, just remember every single day is a gift. Use your time wisely. And I will see you later. Bye.